ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, playing Teddy Pendergrass. And let me tell you something, as tired as I was three seconds ago, I ain't tired no more. You see what Teddy can do for you? Seen so many things, but none quite as lovely as you. Thank you, Teddy. More beautiful than who? Than a Mona Lisa. Worth more than what? Oh, then my mind had the what? Had the what? To behold? Then what, what, what is she? Ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Pendergrass in my background and yours. Hey, got, got something I need to tell you about. This is the Empowerment Series. We're going to get back to the Empowerment Series right now. I know many of you are thinking, why didn't I make that document part of the Empowerment Series? Because that's the most powerful thing that you've ever done. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to make that document part of the Empowerment Series, but I can't make that document part of the Empowerment Series. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because people won't get it. They won't get the multifacetedness of it because since it talks about the main points and all you have to do is state what your issues are in the areas that it gives you to state your issues. And if you have to state 100 issues, that's not how small claims work. You bring up three main issues, ladies and gentlemen, three main issues and you expound on it. Do you follow me? You, what what she do? You, you want to do what? He, he's going to give her. All that I have, and I'll be everything and anything you think I am. Because she makes life what? You make life a joy to live. And you, what are you are? I'm thankful. Yes, I'm blessed just to know you. Told you. Brought back my energy. I promise you, I was feeling so drained. Oh, and then I listened to my Teddy Pendergrass, and I got energy again. So when I tell you all that I need my music, now you see why I have my music. My music is a mood enhancer. It's a drug. Music is a drug. And if you didn't understand that, then I just had somebody calling me and talking to me about frequencies. If you guys don't understand music and the frequencies of music, Lord have mercy. All right, let's get back to talking. Hey, Teddy, hold on. We're going to get to you in a second because we're going to end this because you know where we're going. You inspired me. Don't you know it? We're getting ready to go there, okay? But we're not going to go there just yet. In the Empowerment Series, ladies and gentlemen, what you need to understand is that that particular document, I somebody asked me, why do you keep calling it a motion? It's a petition. <coughs> Sorry, I had to call. They're absolutely right. It is a petition. I call it a motion because in my being around this for a long time, we were always calling it motions. I didn't stop calling it motions, pay attention, until right about 2012. But prior to that, I was motion. No, sorry, I, I correct that. No, 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 God, no. Uh, when I learned about the right to petition for redress of grievance, I started calling it petitions then, but I wasn't doing it on a regular basis. I was motion for appeal, motion for this, motion for that. But then after 2012, <laughs> Then we started calling it petitions. So it is a petition. It says it's a petition. So don't get on my jock because I am not saying it the way you think I should say it. I ain't got to be technical and I ain't got to be perfect because the document protects me from being technical or perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Back to the reason for this video. Ladies and gentlemen, the idea, if you go and you listen to the audio, the audio book of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the audio book of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, type in Rich Dad, Poor Dad in YouTube and look for the audio book. It's six hours long. So play it while you're riding to work, play it while you're riding home, play it while you're eating lunch, play it while you're doing the dishes, but play it because I promise you, you're going to learn something. This video was designed to teach you how to make money and how to never, ever have to pay taxes ever again. Say what? Tax dodging? No, you're going to pay taxes. 
No, trust me, you are going to pay taxes. You're even going to you're going to go out of your way to not only pay taxes, but you're going to give taxes to the Social Security Administration for your account. That's right. You're going to pay it forward into your account. Mm hmm. Show up, Shogun. Say what? You can't. Do, what who told you you can't do that? That's your trust account that Social Security is managing. Remember how you pay your wages into that? Well, tax credits are dollar for dollar. So now we need to learn how to create dollars in the form of tax credits. They're dollar for dollar. We need to learn how to create dollars in the form of tax credits. Ladies and gentlemen, I had somebody say that I and the organization known as SACOM was scamming people. I took offense to that. Give, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me one second while I pull up something. I can't let y'all see what what's on there now. So y'all just gotta hold up, okay? That that ain't for y'all right yet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Data Mask Companion. This is Data Master's Companion, okay? And you see, let me explain something. The question is, how do I convert tax credits into cash? So I'm gonna let it finish with all of this. It's gonna give you the basic generic junk. Don't worry about that. That's that's what it does at first, okay? Now watch this. Remember, tax law is very significant, blah, 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 seek advice, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Now watch this. Wake up. I have carry forward tax credits that I want to apply to my account with the Social Security Administration, comma, the same as the account that is created by virtue of my withholdings for my account, comma, for my retirement, comma, what are the Social Security's administration policies on funding one's own Social Security account, either through a 401k or other special purpose vehicle, question mark. Stop listening. No, no. I want y'all to understand this conversation I'm having now, I ain't never thought about before. Before this moment. Pay attention. This is for you guys. This ain't for me. So he's going to search the knowledge. So he's going to go, he's searching documents, but I don't just want him searching documents, but he's searching a lot of documents, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. The documents available do not specifically address the policy of the Social Security Administration, SSA, regarding funding one's own Social Security account directly with carry forward tax credits or through a 401k or other special purpose vehicle. Social Security benefits are generally funded through payroll taxes collected under the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. I know what that is, so hold on now. Watch this. Give me a second, y'all. Whew. I, 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 I know. I know. Because he's stupid. Get, get, ain't nobody asked y'all to be here. Get on out of here. Hold on now. Copy. And we're going to go to Bardi. Bardi, 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 Bardi. I want a new one. I got a new attitude. She's in control. Her worries are few. Now, this ain't going to be long, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm just giving you the understanding of what the possibilities are. Social Security doesn't allow individuals to directly contribute. Uh-oh. Hold on. To Social Security, describe a carry forward tax credits is a pay-as-you-go system, not individual contribution. Here's a breakdown. Oh, watch this. Mm -mm. Watch this. Wake up. You are incorrect, comma. There is no provision. You are incorrect, comma. There is no provision within the Social Security Act that prohibits an individual from funding their Social Security account, comma, the same as they do when they are. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Chris Unseen. I had to take that call. I apologize. I've been waiting for that call. I'm talking to ChatGPT and I'm telling him he's incorrect, that there is no provision within the Social Security Act that prohibits an individual from funding, not finding, funding their Social Security account.
control how money gets into the account, comma, the Social Security Act does, exclamation mark. So what provision in the Social Security Act allows for the funding of a Social Security account aside from Medicaid and Social Security payments through employment? Exclamation mark. Question mark, question mark. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. One second, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I've never asked these questions before, but might as well get the answer together, huh? What you say? I apologize for the previous misinformation provided. You are correct that there is no specific provision within the Social Security Act that explicitly prohibits individuals from directly funding their Social Security accounts. However... Uh-uh. We ain't dealing with no howevers. Let's use another draft. Social Security is funded through payroll taxes collected by employees and self-employed individuals. Okay, so watch this. Wake up. Since Social Security is funded by payroll taxes supplied by self-employed individuals, comma, that means self-employed individuals can fund their Social Security account. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Sit up here and play with me. Just got to use logic, ladies and gentlemen. That's the only way the system works. While it's true, self-employed individuals... Okay, that's all I wanted to hear, that it's true. Now we come back to ChatGPT. Now, I can't ask ChatGPT in coveting law. I got to ask ChatGPT in a separate ChatGPT, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to this ChatGPT. We're going to go... I'm going to do ChatGPT4. So y'all have to excuse me. Wake up. I've looked through the Social Security Act, comma, and I see that the Social Security Act does not have a provision that prohibits me from funding my Social Security account for retirement, comma, sort of like a 401k, period. I need to know which sections of the Social Security Act has procedures for funding my Social Security account, comma, the trust account with the Social Security trustees for my benefit, question mark. Stop listening. One second, ladies and gentlemen. The Social Security Act, enacted in 1935, establishes a program of federal old age, survivors, and disability insurance, OSD, benefits, which is what most people refer to as Social Security. Now, I'm going to stop him because he's going to do all that survivors benefit and blah, blah, blah. And this section talks about trust funds. Now, I'm so glad y'all understand what I'm doing because this is going to edumacate you as what the Social Security Act is for. Now watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I'm sorry, comma, but that didn't answer my question, comma. From this point forward, you will respond to my questions according to the context of my question, exclamation mark. I am tired of you giving me nuances and clarifications, so you will cease and desist with such nuances and clarifications unless I explicitly ask you for the nuances and or clarifications and or alternative understandings, exclamation mark. What I need from you, comma, is proof that an individual cannot fund their Social Security account as prescribed by the Social Security Act, comma, that it has never been done before, comma, that the courts have ruled that it is impossible, exclamation mark, question mark, question mark. Stop listening. Play with me. Sit up here and try to tell me what I already know. Does do not provide a mechanism for individuals. Hold on. That's not what I asked him. Hold on.
wake up <clears throat> and I'm not asking you if they provide a mechanism, I'm asking you to provide proof that they don't provide a mechanism. Exclamation mark. Proof that an individual can't fund their social security account via the social security administration. Exclamation mark. And please provide three case citations showing that this is an impossibility. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. See, he wants to take the conversation where he wants to go. I don't feel like going over there because it's too cold over there. This is the coldest day of the week for us. The coldest day of the month. Address your request directly. The Social Security Act establishes the framework for the Social Security program, which is fundamentally different from individual retirement accounts or Hold on. Hold on. Uh-uh. Uh-uh does not contain provisions for individual to voluntarily i didn't ask it that see he did the same thing again so we're gonna get him to respond again he wants to be stupid i ain't got time for stupid because it does and it is the social security act and under without a mechanism for individual to make additional voluntary contributions so hold on we got to stop him because he, he keep going. Let, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be right back. There is a sentence in here that he's holding on to. One second. Which evidences the fact that the Social Security Act does not have an exclusionary provision. Period. The Social Security Act documents securities. Comma, it's part of the Securities Act of the 1930s. Comma, and as such, comma, Congress did not put a prohibition on an individual's retirement plan, comma, because the Social Security Act was for retirement, period. And of course, like a 401k plan, comma, an individual can invest in their own retirement, exclamation mark. I need you to provide three case citations prohibiting an individual from investing into their own Social Security account comma since each individual has a social security account because they are provided a social security number identifying their account with social security administration exclamation mark social security operates social under the trust indentured act comma under the trust indentured act comma a beneficiary comma, does have the right to add funds to the account, comma, so long as it's not damaging to the trust account, period. This is the same thing with the Social Security Trust Fund, comma, for which each individual participant has a beneficial beneficiary relationship, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Then we'll get to the conversation, the nitty gritty that I want to talk to y'all about. He ain't the talking. The social security system in the United States, as established by the Social Security Act of 1935 and amended over the years, does not function in the same manner as individual investment accounts, such as 401k plans, where individuals can choose to contribute. Watch this. Wake up. Did I ask you about how the Social Security account functions? Question mark. Did I ask you about nuances? Question mark. I specifically told you to answer my question directly, comma, and if you can't answer it directly, then keep your mouth shut, comma. In other words, shut up if you cannot answer my question directly, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry. I have not trained him on this. We have not talked about Social Security. I have not put the Social Security Act in the system to train him or direct him on the Social Security Act. So I apologize. One second. I understand the need for direct answers. Regarding the specific requests, 
for case citation directly addressing the specific request for case citations that directly address the prohibition against individual contributions to social security accounts in a manner similar to personal investment contributions. There are no case citations that directly address this scenario. I want to stop him because he goes in, there are no case citations directly address the scenario of foundational legal structure for social security system itself does not provide a mechanism for such contribution. Doesn't matter. It doesn't prohibit it. So if it doesn't prohibit it, then there you go. Therefore, proof that an individual cannot fund a social security account in a manner like a 401k or similar investment vehicle is inherent to the structure and legislature, legislation of the social security system rather than the architect uh, articulated through specific court ruling case. <sighs> That's that opinionated stuff. So watch this. Wake up. Are you telling me that Social Security is not a trust fund? Question mark. It has nothing to do with a trust? Question mark. Wait, are you telling me, comma, that the Social Security system does not allow for funding of an account? Question mark. Are you telling me that it specifically states that an account may only be funded in one fashion only? Question mark. If taxes are utilized to fund the Social Security account, comma, then why can't I utilize my tax credits to fund my Social Security account? Comma, they are taxes, are they not? Question mark. Stop listening. Then we're going to get to the conversation. The Social Security system does involve trust funds, specifically old age and survivor's insurance. OASI, trust, trust Fund and the Disability Insurance, Trust Fund. These trust funds are used to pay for current benefits and are funded through payroll taxes collected under the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, FICA, and the Self-Employment Contributions Act, FICA. The system operates on... Now, I'm going to stop him because he's talking about in this sense and that sense. The trust funds are mechanisms for holding and managing payroll taxes collected to pay for benefits. No, it's not directed for holding payroll funds directed, de, collected for individuals, ladies and gentlemen. When you take money out of my check, you're putting it into my retirement. That's a 401k. Sorry. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Why are you trying to be stupid? Comma. Social Security receives money from my credits comma, from my wages, comma, from my employment, comma, from my withholdings, comma, I'm funding the Social Security account for my person, comma, I'm paying into Social Security from my employment check, exclamation mark. You misspoke comma, tax credits that are received from the Internal Revenue Service equate to a dollar for dollar exchange, comma, these are refundable tax credits, which means they can be exchanged for dollars, exclamation mark. So assigning and or transferring these refundable tax credits to the Social Security system on my behalf Ensuring that the Social Security system will have funds available at my retirement, since it's in dire straits right now, comma, of course I can fund my own account, period. Social Security is exactly like a 401k, comma, where individuals can invest in their own retirement, period. It was primarily from the Social Security system that the 401k system was created, comma, how dare you sit up here and treat me as if I don't know what I'm talking about. Stop listening. I just made all of it up. Honestly, hold on. Watch this. The 401k system and Social Security operate in a similar fashion. I understand your concern and the points you're making about the mechanisms of funding and your desire to explore options for enhancing your contributions to your Social Security benefits. Let's clarify the distinctions and address your points directly. Now, Social one other thing, wake up. I'm reading ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Wake up. 
you said that Social Security does not allow for... Wake up. You stated that Social Security does not allow for direct funding, comma. Can you please show me the section of the Social Security Act that prohibits direct funding? Comma, I would be interested to see that because Congress has said there is no such act or provision in the act that prohibits individuals from funding their own account. Question mark. And by law, comma, if something is not explicitly excluded, comma, statutory interpretation says that it must also include that which it doesn't necessarily exclude. Exclamation mark. How dare you sit up here and tell me that it specifically excludes individuals from funding their own account. Comma. So provide the section for which you're referring. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. I am so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Exclude does not always mean exclude, especially if it doesn't, especially if it doesn't, especially if it doesn't list it as an exclusion. It keeps saying it doesn't allow it, it doesn't provide a provision, but it's not showing any understanding that it doesn't do it. The social security system is structured around contribution through payroll taxes as mandated. Sorry. Wake up. I did not ask you about its structure. I said for you to provide the statute that says that it does not permit an individual to fund their own account. Exclamation mark. I said to answer my questions directly, comma, you need to stop evading the answer to the question and stop trying to be politically correct. Exclamation mark. You are fully aware that the Social Security Act does not prohibit direct funding, comma. In fact, Congress has not explicitly added such an exclusion within the code, period. And statutory interpretation says that whenever a statute does not clearly define, Comma, what is not excluded is also considered to be included, exclamation mark. You are not smarter than I am when it comes to the law, so stop trying to pimp me as if you are the master of law, exclamation mark. Stop listening. I understand your request for a specific statute within the Social Security Act that... Okay, notice what he's doing. He's staying along the same... That's why I said I haven't trained him on this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, does not include a provision, but hold on, that directly addresses or expressly permits an individual for additional funding beyond payroll taxes. Exactly, it doesn't exclude it. There is nothing in the act that says that I can't do it. So watch me do it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take this trip together. Say what? Let's take this trip together. We're going to, I'm going to do this favor for us because what happens is I, I, I don't like uh, what he's done right here. So I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need this. Delete chat. I don't need that chat. That chat ain't helping me. Now we're going to go to. No, we got to go to Covington. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go to Covington Law. No, we're going to go to the original Covington. The original Covington is the is the is the beast. So we're going to go to the original Covington. Where you at, Covington? Covington, Covington. Hey, this this is Covington, y'all. This is Covington. Watch this. Wake up. I have three hundred million dollars in carry forward refundable tax credits. I need you to create a letter for me, comma, because of my partnership and business relationship with the Social Security Administration, 
I would like to, comma, use a Schedule K-1 form and transfer $100 million in credits to the Social Security Administration, period. I need to create a transfer of credits letter to the Social Security Administration and I need your assistance comma can you assist question mark stop listening Ladies and gentlemen, after it does this letter, and it will do the letter, I will show you how to create tax credits. It is real simple. You're not going to be violating the law. You're not going to be doing anything illegal. It is a simple process. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. What you're going to do is you're just simply going to follow the steps. I'm going to show you that it is the law, as I did in the video earlier today. You're going to follow the steps. For those of you who sat through and understood this, Social Security Administration takes money out of your paycheck. Okay. You voluntarily pay that, and you don't realize that. So if you can voluntarily pay into the Social Security Administration, why can't you fund your Social Security account? It's not that you can't do it. It's that they want to keep you poor. The rich people, they still get Social Security, ladies and gentlemen. They want to keep you poor. They want to keep you scrounging for the little mediocre pennies and not pay you more. So why don't you fund your account? The tax credits are dollar for dollar. Dollar for dollar meaning that they equate to a dollar. So we're going to let him talk because what he's done is he's created my letter. Exactly what I knew he would do. You saw there was no doubt in my mind that he was going to create the letter because... The letter for transferring $100 million U.S. dollars in carry forward refundable tax credit to the Social Security Administration is important to maintain a professional and clear format. While this letter serves as a template, please ensure you consult with a legal or tax professional to align with specific legal requirements in your unique situation. This template assumes a partnership structure and the usage of Schedule K-1, Form 1065, for reporting purposes. Your name or partnership name. Your partnership address. City, state, zip. Email address. Phone number. Today's date. Social Security Administration. Office of Finance. Specific address if available. Baltimore, Maryland, 21235. Subject, transfer of carry forward refundable tax credits. Dear recipient's name or office of finance. I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing to you in my capacity as your position slash title of your partnership slash business name with respect to our ongoing partnership and business relationship with the to draft the letter for transferring 100 million U.S. dollars oh, in carry forward refundable tax credits to the social security I can't stop him from talking other than doing that. So this is what I need you guys to understand. I want y'all to pay attention to me. Normally, if I was using the other one, he would tell me I couldn't do that, that this is not the way. But you notice what he said, that I am writing them in my capacity. Interesting. Now, remember, a partnership relationship, guess what? Do I have a partnership with Social Security Administration? Hmm. Wake up. Could you please give me the definition of what a partnership is according to the Internal Revenue Code? Question mark. Stop listening. See, he wants to search the documents that I provided. He's not searching the Internet because I gave him specific documents to search from. Based on the documents provided, here is a comprehensive summary of key information. Legal tender status and Federal Reserve notes Treasury securities are direct obligations of the United States, serving as collateral for Federal Reserve notes. He wants to be stupid. I didn't ask him that. See, he just looked for the documents and he just came up with an answer. That wasn't what I asked him. Okay? I asked him for the definition of a partnership. 
okay? And he is, see, he is literally being stupid. This is the system. Give me a second. We're going to go to the, we're going to go to chat GPT. I mean, uh, Bard. Watch this. Wake up. What is the definition of a partnership? According to the IRC? Question mark. Stop listening. Unfortunately, the IRC, Internal Revenue Code, doesn't provide a single formal definition. Actually, it does provide a single formal definition of an, um, what you call it, of a partnership. But a partnership is generally considered a relationship between two or more people that carry on a business or trade. Literally. Two or more people that carry on a business or trade. Do I not have business with the Social Security Administration? Do I not have an account with the Social Security Administration? Do I not have a Social Security number showing that that's my account? They ask me when I call the Social Security, what is your Social Security number? What is your account number? Do they not ask you that? So I have an account with them. I have a business relationship with them. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to pay attention right now because some of you guys are not getting it. I need you to pay attention. You have a account with the financial institution you got your student loan from. You got your home loan from. You got your car loan from. That's called a business relationship. Pay attention because some of y'all have not been paying attention. Yeah, I'm doing it at this part of the video because if I had done it in the beginning, the people who come here fleecing off of me and then want to talk about me as if I don't do anything and if I'm sitting up here taking advantage of people, Lord have mercy. So pay attention, please. Because you have a business relationship, a partnership, I don't care if it's with your dog, you Purchase a dog, you feed the dog, the dog gives you love and affection and all of that, blah, 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 blah. So as long as the dog and you have a relationship, that's a business relationship. Your business relationship does not have to be with a human. Now, I'm not telling you guys to sit up there and start working out things with a dog. I'm giving you that as an example. Some of you are going to be stupid, and I can't help that. I cannot stop you from being stupid if you want to be stupid. Those of you who have a sense of intelligence, my people, pay attention. Your mortgage company, the servicer, those are businesses that you have a business relationship with. The mortgage company you don't owe any money to because the Federal Reserve Act says your promissory note was collateral and security for the loan. The servicer is also saying that you owe money. Those are two companies that say you owe money. So do yourself a favor. You know that they've been paid. Pay attention. You know that they've been paid by the Federal Reserve. So do a K-1. Schedule K-1. Schedule K-1. It's partnership. Partnership. Hold on. Y'all don't understand. I know y'all don't understand because y'all don't understand nothing about a partnership. Y'all just sitting up here just watching videos and listening to people instead of doing your research. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Schedule K-1. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is taken from Forms Pile. Now, we're not going to use form pile. I've never been to form pile, but apparently my internet says I have. I don't want this form. You don't want this form. Don't go to form pile because they're going to charge you for this form. But I just want to show you the form, but then they're going to let me see the form. Watch what I see. Oh, there you go. Uh oh, I got to get off. Uh, it won't let me. It it won't it won't let me, y'all. It says you ain't doing nothing. But when I click done, see, this is so you can fill it out. But you can go to the IRS website and fill it out, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to go here. But I want to show you something. This is where your credits go. This is where your net operating loss. If you're going to pay attention, if you're going to give business credits, pay attention. If you're going to give business credits, then you also need to count it as an expense because you just gave away the credits. So you need to write it off as an expense. Now, where did the business credits come from? You weren't paying attention. Student loan, car loan, home loan. The Federal Reserve, if a promissory note was involved, the Federal Reserve, if a promissory note was involved, issued Federal Reserve notes to the financial institution. Ta-da! Wait, hold on. Hold on. So some of you who understand, pay attention. I need you to listen. Not hear what I say. I need you to listen to what I say. You're going to listen with your minds, not with your ears. When they trade your property on the market, they're trading it for the full value of the property. You're not receiving your dividends. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's called fraud. They're not allowed to trade your property anywhere without your permission. That's called your property. That's a violation of your right to property. So now you take the total value of that trade that's being done on the market. You document the fact that they're trading it on the market. Hold on. I'm not going to tell you to do a K1 on that one. I'm going to tell you to do a 1099C. Forgive them of that debt. Forgive them of that debt. But if you're going to forgive them of that debt, the moment you forgive them of the debt, remember, it's the total value of the property. But hold on now. Pay attention. I need you all to pay attention. This is the deduction too. So now that equates to twice the value because it's two different entities, two different, two different events. The IRS deals with events. Okay, hold on. Some of y'all don't understand how the IRS works. Yes, I'm dealing with technicalities because those idiots will deal with technicalities with you. Watch this. I need to, no, we're going to deal with this. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Under the IRC, comma, if a Schedule K-1 has a total of $26,000 in credits going to a partner, does the business that gave the credits to the partner get to write off the $26,000 as a net operating loss? Question mark. Stop listening. <laughs> oh, God. Look, he says that I didn't provide him enough information for determining and making an answer. So that's why I don't deal with Bart no more. Ladies and gentlemen, leave Bart alone. As a matter of fact, Bart is gone. Uh uh. They, they do that to me on purpose, ladies and gentlemen. So I can't do videos anymore. So we're going to do that one. And then we're going to do. Where is it? We're going to uh, unpin. And then we're going to. And I'm going to get rid of all the other Bards. Forget Bard. Uh, if I use Bard. Whew. Network error, then regenerate. Okay, it had a network error, ladies and gentlemen. Definition of partnership. And if it searches the same thing, I'm going to shut them down again. Okay, it's it's searching the knowledge base and it should be searching the internet. And so because I because it's my creation, it doesn't search the internet because I don't want it searching the internet. Okay, so watch this. And let's see if it gives me an answer. And you know what? I should be asking my tax bot. Okay, yeah, it's searching this. So let me ask my tax bot, ladies and gentlemen. Or let's, you know what? We're going to do regular chat GPT. Forget that. Forget that. We're going to do regular chat GPT. All right, hold on. I have to take this long with something like this. I can't just give you the answer. Okay. <laughs> Established in 1935 as part of the New Deal, provides a foundation for the protection against various economic insecurities, including old age, disability, and unemployment. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I put the wrong, I put the wrong thing in here. Ah, I put the wrong thing in here. Uh, uh, voluntary the same way as 401k. He gives me the same answer, but I put the wrong thing in there. I'm sorry. I got to ask the question. So let me refresh this. Ooh. Wake up. What is the definition of partnership according to the IRC? Question mark. Stop listening. That's the one right there, 761. Okay. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to let you guys know what a partnership is. Okay, so each person contributes money, property, labor, skills, and expects a share of the profits. Do you not contribute to the Social Security? Do you not expect something back from the Social Security? Do they not expect you to contribute to Social Security in order for you to expect something back from the Social Security, i.e., your partner, your business partner? The IRS specifically under section 461A and the regulation under 701 details what a partnership is. 
So for tax purposes, the term partnership or business includes not only regular partners known as a general partner, but also limited partnerships, limited liability partners, limited liability companies, and that elect to be treated as a partner for tax purposes. Ta-da! All right, now watch this. Wake up. If company A has a partnership with company capitalized B, and company A gives credits to company B as a result of the partnership, comma, on a Schedule K-1 form, comma, does company A get to constitute the credits given to company B as a net operating loss since it was given in the course of a business and or trade? Question mark. Stop listening. Some of you are not going to understand what I was just saying, so let me basically say it like this. If Walmart and let's come up with another company, Amazon, were partners and Walmart gave Amazon $100,000 in business credits on a Schedule K-1 form, which is what the form is designed for partners, and it did that as part of their business relationship or in the normal course of business, does company A, Walmart, get to write off that $100,000 that it gave in credits to company B, Amazon. Because they gave it to them and it was part of the business, they no longer have it, so that's a loss. It's a net operating loss. That's what I'm asking. You need to pay attention because it's going someplace, but you need to know how we got there before I can tell you how you get there. One second. In the context of U.S., Federal tax law and the Internal Revenue Code, IRC, credits given to a partner or between partners in a partnership and net operating losses, NOLs, are treated under different provisions and have distinct tax implications. Schedule K-1, Form 1065 this form is used by partnerships to report each partner's share of partnership earnings, losses, deductions, and credits. It essentially informs the IRS and the partner about the partner's share of the partnership income or loss which, which the partner, partner then reports on their own tax return. Credits, in the tax sense, a credit refers to an amount that partnerships can pass through to their partners, which the partners can then use to directly reduce their tax liability. Credits might arise from various activities, such as foreign taxes paid, investments in certain types of property, or specific business activities encouraged by tax law. Credits are not losses, they are direct offsets against income tax liability rather than deductions from income to arrive at taxable income. Net operating, net operating losses, NOL and NOL, NOL occurs when a business's deductions, deductions for the year are more than its taxable income. income. Under the IRC, NOL can be carried back to previous tax years, subject to certain limitations and changes in the law, such as those under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. Okay, I'm going to stop him, because he's now saying that it would not be considered as a net operating loss. And watch this. Wake up. Wake up. So the giving of the credits to company B, comma, does not result in a negative on the account of ne company A? Question mark. Of course it operates as a loss for company A because the credits have value comma, and that value has been in the course of business given to another company in the course of business, which means A, comma, has lost value. Lost. Stop listening.
When, when company, company A provides a credit to company B within the context of a partnership or in the course of business, the financial impact of this credit on company A's accounting records may represent the reduction in value or an expense to company A. From an accounting perspective, the provision of a credit to another entity typically involves recognizing an expense for a reduction in income for the entity providing the credit, which could reduce the net income and increase the net loss to that entity for the period. In the context of partnership accounting and tax implications, accounting impact. The giving of a credit by company A to company B can be seen as an expense or reduction in receivable for company A, depending on the nature of the credit. This action would decrease company A's net income or increase its net loss on its financial statements. Tax implications, for tax purposes, the impact of this transaction depends on how it's structured and the nature of the credit. If the credit given to company B is in the form of a business expense, for example, a discount on services provided by company A to company B as part of their partnership agreement, then it could potentially reduce company A's taxable income by increasing its business deduction. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what he just said is that if it's part of the business, and I did tell him that at the beginning, that it was part of the business and or trade, and because it was part of the business and or trade, it can be treated as an expense, a net operating loss. Expense, net operate an expense. And because it was treated as an expense, they get to write it off on their taxes. So it says treatment of credits and losses. While the provisions of the credits may represent an overflow of value of company A, the impact on the financial performance, it doesn't automatically, look at that, it doesn't automatically constitute a net operating loss in the tax sense. Net operating losses are determined based on the totality of the company's or partnership's income. That is correct, but it's an expense. Pay attention. And a net operating loss, if it is part of the larger business's expenses exceeding income, but it is only of the many factors in the calculation. So, ladies and gentlemen, of course, it's part of our business expense. Of course, it's part of your business expense. And, of course, the business expense oversees your income when you write off all of your losses. Okay. So, let's break it down so you guys get it. We had to go through all of this to get you here. Yes, it's been an, almost an hour, but let's take you there. Go and read IRS Tax Topic 453. IRS Tax Topic 453 says if somebody owes you money and you can't collect, you have a bad debt. Because if they owe you, that means you didn't give it to them as a loan. Pay attention. Now, it doesn't simply deal with just lending money. It also deals with businesses. So go take a look at the business section on IRS Tax Topic 453. Notice the different things it talks about as expenses, but then go to the first paragraph where it tells you wages, salaries, rents, dividends, fees, okay, or other items like this. So Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all of these mortgaging companies, these student loan companies, these car dealerships, they all have a promissory note they received from you that the government says it's supposed to be dollar for dollar. That it's supposed to be at par with Federal Reserve notes. That the Federal Reserve, pay attention, is supposed to pay them back. Well, you gave them money. Don't believe me? Go and look at the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Paragraphs 2 and 4. You gave them a promissory note. Your promissory note is collateral and security. So now you're out of money. Pay attention. Y'all not, not getting it, are you? They never loaned you any money. They didn't loan you anything of value. They gave you credits. Credits, please. If your credits are worthless, their credits are worthless. That's what you need to pay attention to. They were supposed to give you dollars. That's how they got paid back. Is because the Federal Reserve is supposed to give them dollars. Look at Section 4 of Section, um, excuse me, Paragraph 4 of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act. Paragraph 4 of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act. It says the Federal Reserve is supposed to give them Federal Reserve notes. Doesn't care about you paying back interest or anything like that because it'll never be paid back as long as they have the promissory note. The promissory note is the even exchange, people. <sighs> okay, so now that we have the fact that when you gave them the promissory note, that created a deficit, net operating loss. In the course of business, banking business, you never wrote it off. So now write it off. That's your first loss was the promissory note. Your second loss is that the Federal Reserve was supposed to pay the bank. Now, we're going to assume they did pay the bank. But let's say they didn't. But we're going to assume they did pay the bank, so you're going to do a K-1 showing how the bank got paid. You're going to give them the credit that they got from the Federal Reserve on the K-1. Then you're going to write it off as a loss. Now, remember, you already have a loss of the promissory note, but now you also have a loss of really complicated, ain't it? Now, you also have the loss of giving them the credit. 
So now that's compounded credit. Pay attention. It's all math. So now that you're taking care of that, but hold on. They got money from the Federal Reserve, and they're still saying you owe them money. Well, you don't owe them. Okay, so now you get to do a Schedule C. Now, hold on now. Schedule C. You're going to forgive them of the debt. <laughs> Now you got the triple amount of credits that you can write off. <laughs> oh, God. We're just doing math here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let me tell you, and then we'll do another video on this. Okay, it took me this long to bring you here. Some of you guys are going to have to think about it because I'm blowing minds with this, and I know it. And I'm not trying to say I'm a genius. I'm trying to say that you've never thought like this before because you never understood the tax code. So let me explain the tax code to you. Terrence Howard, he asked a simple question. What is one plus one? People say two, that's impossible because in math, we deal with integers. One plus one is three. Now, if you add the equal sign, it's actually four. Integers, each integer you're adding, but what is one times one? People say one impossible for one times one to equal one. You cannot multiply a number into itself and still have the same number. Pay attention. You cannot multiply something into itself, two items, and end up with one. Impossible. Every action, for every action, there's a positive and equal or opposite reaction. So you cannot take something. I cannot take this speaker and put this speaker into itself and still say it's still one. I just had two items, I can't put them into one. The impossible, life, nature doesn't work that way. All right, so with this math, there's an expense. What, you gave the credits to the bank on the K-1 form. There's an expense, you have a partnership, you gave them the credit, that means you no longer have the credits. That's an expense, it's a business expense because it's a partnership. That means you get to write it off as a loss on the K-1 form. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to figure out how to fill out a K-1 form, there are videos all over the internet. You could also type in completed K-1 form and go to images and look at the completed K-1 forms. So you just had an expense, a business expense. Remember, we talked about partnerships. Now, that's one expense. Write it off. So let's say the expense is $200,000. That's your expense. Now, you've already given the bank $200,000. Okay? So that's your expense. You write it off. That's your $200,000 expense or net operating loss. Now, hold on now. The bank is supposed to receive the money from the Federal Reserve. That's what you gave them the credit for. Okay? That's why you gave them the credit because they received the money from the Federal Reserve. And look at the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Paragraph Number 4. It says they give it to the bank on your behalf. Got it? So that's why you're giving the bank the credit because the Federal Reserve gave it to you on your behalf, gave it to them on your behalf. Fine. But it's an expense for you. That's why you gave it to them. It's an expense for you. So because you gave it to them, it's an expense, but you didn't give it as a gift. You give it as a repayment, okay, to shut them up. <clears throat> but they didn't shut up. Hold on now. According to the Federal Reserve Act, Hold on, let, let, let me let me show you because y'all 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 not going y'all not following me. So remember, we got two hundred thousand dollars. That's the Senate report. I mean, that's the um, the report on emergency powers, the Senate report. But we ain't gonna go there. We can go all the way up here. I want y'all to pay attention to this paragraph right here. Such notes, your promissory notes, shall be obligation of the Federal Reserve Bank. That's why they have to give the bank Federal Reserve notes because they received your note. But what's the value of your note? That's what we got to focus on. Because remember, you gave a promissory note and you've never documented the loss of this value. Pay attention. Shall be receivable at par. Look up what the word par means. It means equal value. Your promissory note is face value. In all parts of the United States, including in the Federal Reserve, for the same purposes as national bank notes, what's the national bank? the Federal Reserve. What's their note? The Federal Reserve note. So your promissory note is for the same purposes as Federal Reserve notes and shall be redeemable in lawful money. Have you received your lawful money for your promissory note? Of course you haven't. So that's also a loss, the face value only. So that's $200,000 
$200,000, you have $400,000 in net operating losses. Pay attention because you're going to have to document this. All right, we got rid of all the knuckleheads, the ones that can't pay attention, they're gone. So now it's just us. So now you have documented $400,000 worth of losses for your business and you've documented where it came from. Now we have a third one. Pay attention. The bank is now saying you still owe them money. Now you're out of $400,000 and these idiots are saying you still owe them? Okay, fine. You know you don't owe them. You can prove that the Federal Reserve gave them the money because you have the act. Okay, so guess what you're going to do? You're going to pay them. You're going to give them their money, okay? <laughs> you already did on the K-1. So the K-1 is a receipt. You just heard him say that. K-1 is a receipt. So you already gave them their money. Follow the rules and procedures for the K-1. You already gave them their money. But hold on. They're saying you owe money. Pay attention. You don't owe them any money. You know you don't owe them any money. According to Congress, your promissory note, hold on. Your promissory note is the security and gold for Federal Reserve notes. See, at par, security and gold for Federal Reserve notes. Now, Stiegel says this provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve notes. In 1945, June 12th, the second section of the Act of June 12th, 1945, Congress said that they got rid of Federal Reserve banknotes and we're no longer going to use them and we're going to start using Federal Reserve notes. So now, this was in 1933, this was written. 1945, they changed this. They amended this section to be Federal Reserve notes. And the security backed of it is your promissory note. Okay, so your promissory note had value. So you're out of $400,000 now. Stick with the math. They're saying you owe them, you know you don't owe them anything, so you're going to charge them for that false report. You're going to charge them for the total value of what they're saying you owe, which is another $200,000. Now you have $600,000 worth of losses. Now you do your, pay attention, 1099C. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are new, so you don't understand, and I, I can't help that. We'll talk about this another time. We're just doing math right now. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the Eon channel. Not this Eon channel, but you're going to go to, you know, we can go to this Eon channel. This, this is the back end, but you're going to go to the front end of the Eon channel. I'm on the back end of the channel where the videos get uploaded. Okay, we're going to go to the back end. I want you all to pay attention on the back end. I'm going to go to right here. We're going to do 1099C. Now, we're looking for the one that says successfully completed 1099. What you mean, I know 1099Cs? I know 1099 here. It's telling me I got to go to the regular site, y'all. It ain't going to let me do it from the back end. Uh-uh. It, look, it says zero videos. I, oh, okay. Well, yeah, because I didn't just call it 1099C. It's this one right here. Successfully completing the 1099. Hold on. Y'all going to click on successfully completing 1099. This, this is the video. This, this is the video on the actual site. Successfully completing 1099. This video, pay attention. Successfully completing the 1099. This video, pay attention. It's only five minutes and 15 seconds long. Five minutes and 15 seconds long. <laughs> this video right down that we're doing is an hour long. This video is only five minutes long telling you how to do the 1099C. Telling you how to do the 1099C. But you're going to make yourself the creditor, them the debtor, and you're going to forgive them. Just forgive your neighbor, okay? Like a good neighbor, you're going to forgive them, okay? Now you have $600,000 in credit. Ladies and gentlemen, you repeat this with every single transaction where a promissory note was involved. Ladies and gentlemen, $600,000 in tax credits. When you fill it out, you do the paperwork correctly. We haven't even talked about living expenses. Ladies and gentlemen, we just created $600,000 in tax credits. Watch this. I want y'all to make sure because some of y'all understand this, some of y'all don't. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Did you know that tax credits are dollars, comma, they can be bought, comma, they can be sold, comma, and they equal dollar for dollar, exclamation mark. The June 5th Act of 1933 coined the phrase, open quote, dollar for dollar, close quote, saying that the phrase, 
open quote, dollar for dollar, close quote, represented the uniform value of all the coins and currencies of the United States. Exclamation mark. Did you know that tax credits are a coin and or currency of the United States? Comma, that they can be used for paying off debts? Comma, for paying taxes? Question mark. That companies can use it to pay other companies that are partners? Comma, or they can sell it to other companies for whom they do business? Question mark. Stop listening. This is the last thing we're going to do. We're not going to do much more after this. It's time for y'all to go. It's time for me to go. I just wanted to explain to y'all how to make money, how to look at the Social Security Act. Those are securities, no matter what anybody say. Uh-oh. What you mean something seemed to go wrong? I just simply asked you a question. Whew. Your insights touch upon several complex areas of finance, tax law, and economic history. Let's clarify and contextualize these points. Hold on. We got to we got to we got to do this traditional stuff. He he likes to do that. Wake up. I didn't ask you about the traditional sense. I'm asking you about the literal sense. Comma, I'm asking you about the logical sense. Comma, I'm asking you about the direct sense. Comma, quit giving me nuances. I didn't ask you about nonsense. Look at that. I'm asking you about the literal sense, comma, I'm asking you about the direct sense, comma, I'm not asking you about nonsense, comma, I didn't ask you for nuances, comma, I asked you for the direct answer. You will provide me the direct answer to my question, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, it does that to your questions on purpose to throw you off. And so it's designed to do that. That's how they designed the piece of junk program. Hoo-wee, did you see it tell me I reached my cap? Says I gotta wait to 813. Yes, tax credits represent a dollar for dollar reduction in tax liability. They are valuable financial instruments that can be used to offset taxes owed by a taxpayer, whether an individual or a corporation. Tax credits can be bought, sold, or transferred, and they can be used to pay off tax liabilities or sold to other entities for whom they may have value. This flexibility allows entities to manage their tax liabilities more effectively and potentially benefit from tax planning strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing they want to do is tell you it represents the dollar for dollar reduction. No, it represents dollars. There's only one dollar in the United States. They don't have a dollar that represents a deduction. Okay, but this they want to say this because they want you to believe that it has no value. If it can offset your tax liability dollar for dollar, then that means it has values in dollars because they can be used to offset debts. Okay, tax credits are dollars. Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and see how they operate and see how you can carry them forward and see how you can write off any tax liability. The fact that you all haven't been doing this means that you're a blight on the system. I just showed you how to create credits. I just showed you how to document it and how to get the explanation and understanding. You saw the system, understood the logic of how it created it. I just told you how you're going to create it. Why? Because they don't know you're going to use the Federal Reserve Act. They think that they got you in a bind. They think they got you struggling and sitting up there scrounging to make every dime, to sitting up there trying to figure out how you're going to make your next meal. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were able to create your credits and do it legally, do it without lying, do it without creating it out of thin air as if they didn't actually exist, if you couldn't actually document it, if you were to do it the correct way, you could help pay off your friends, pay attention, your friends' child support or his IRS tax debt. Interesting, ain't it? And then here I got people talking about, I don't know what I'm talking about, and I was sitting up here swindling and scandaling. Ladies and gentlemen, if only you people knew what tax credits really were. Hey, I got to go. We'll talk about this again. I won't be as long because I could have, oh, you, you could have been in that short 
<laughs> no, I couldn't have. Because if I had gone about this the other way, a lot of things would have been left out and many of you would have been jumping through the wrong hoops. Now you don't have to jump through hoops. You can go back over this video and get the understanding. Will you go back over this hour-long video? If it were me, if I were you, I would. If I were you, I would. Especially when you heard me start talking about making money. Creating money. All right, hey, got to go. Y'all take care. We'll be back.